Hi, we're here at Grant Larson Productions with Kyle Stewart, our post-production supervisor. Maybe we could peel back the curtain a little bit and you could share with us a little bit of what m some people may know a little bit about or others may know nothing about with regards to the post-production process. It's obviously, I think it's the most important part of the process because you know we have to fix everybody else's mistakes. As they say, we'll fix it in post. A lot of people don't seem to understand the flow, we get the media, we have to organize the media, we have to sometimes transcode the media, make proxies, watch the media, and that's all before we even start cutting anything. And that could take several days or weeks, depending on how much footage it is. When you are ready and say, we're gonna start editing and we're gonna have something to first show a client, a director, the creatives, what's your goal to achieve for that first phase? The first phase, if it's scripted, we just kind of want to get what's on the page on the screen and see if that works as originally envisioned. You're somewhat limited with your options as far as if they screw up a line, you can't really use that. If they don't have the right inflection, you can't really use that. So your options are a little bit more limited. And then the fun in editing is just choosing the shots and the pacing and, and things like that. But the first cut for something like that, yeah, you definitely want to give them exactly what they ask for. For non-scripted, it's a little different. You kind of just want to get the theme and usually you want to make it a little fat. You want it to be longer than you know it's going to be. So there's a lot of different options to take this out if it's not advancing the story or advancing the subject matter. Generally speaking, a rough cut is just the raw camera footage. If we know that there's going to be a graphic somewhere, we'll put up a slate that says insert graphic. and. There's no sound mixing, there's no color, there's no music, there's no sound effects because... All that stuff needs to be timed out. And if we're in the rough cut phase, then nothing is to time yet. And so it's kind of a, a waste of our time and the client's time to, to go through that whole process just to start it back up again for each additional edit. Walk us through a little bit of what it still takes to get to between final or a locked edit and when you're delivering the final piece. You get what is called picture lock, where you know everything on screen is going to stay on screen exactly how it is. And then you go through the process of mixing the audio, adding music and sound effects if, if they need to be there fully, ADR if that's part of the process. That's when you start doing the color correction, the color grading, adding any special effects or graphics, titles, credits, things like that. But once you have picture lock, then you can actually finish the, the, the project. So Kyle, before any project begins, what's that one thing that's on your wish list? That one thing where you go, I hope for this project, this is what I receive that will help you do your job at the best level it can be. Because we're at the end of the line of the production, we're kind of not brought into it until everything's already done. And so I think planning for post-production and pre-production would be extraordinarily useful for you know the post team and for the producers, director, whoever else is involved with the, the production because there's been a lot of times where I've been on set editing as they shoot and we find things as we go along that you wouldn't find until a month later because that's when you start editing. The earlier you can bring post into the process, the smoother things go. What are a couple questions that you like to ask so that you're put in the right framework and ready when you get into the post-production phase? Are there any special effects, any graphics? Is the edit going to be straightforward? Is it going to be stylized? What kind of cameras are being used? Is the lighting practical? Are we going to do most of the coloring in post? And you can also discuss things and say, this might work if you shoot it this way, but you might want to try it this way. Just like you wouldn't hire a DP without telling them you know, if you want it to look like this, or you wouldn't hire a wardrobe without giving them examples of, of what you want the costumes to look like. A lot of times we are told, oh, we want lower thirds and we want intro graphics and we want wipes and we want all this, but we are giving no direction. And so that could end up being a much longer process of finding what they want, the style that they like, the speed that they like, because we're starting from scratch each time. You give them an example, they don't like it, we gotta start right over. So, being involved in the pre-production and to go through those steps and we're not rushing to meet a deadline, that, that would always be helpful, which is more time. It's usually all we need is more time. So what I've learned today is for you in the post department, 
There's a lot of patience involved. There's a lot of steps and there's a lot of layers to every step. So the best thing to do is bring posts in early, communication, and just find, like we do in every department, that happy medium of collaborative work. Right. Uh, well, thank you, Kyle. It was really great to hear and kind of pull the curtain back on some of the post process. And thank you so much for being here. No problem, anytime. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more industry savvy tips from Grant Larson Productions. <laughs>